Good afternoon and welcome to TVM News. Today is Friday, March 22nd. I'm Casey Jeanette. And I'm Nate McLean. Today we have news about a man found dead in Luzerne County State Prison. We also have news about a three and a half mile trail coming to Roaring Brook. And we'll be checking in with Emily Rowe for the weather along with our sports anchor, Vincent Goldschmidt, to find out the latest in the sports world. The State Department of Corrections announced that a 42-year-old man serving time for a child rape was found dead Tuesday in his cell at Luzerne County State Prison. Corridor was found unresponsive in his cell early Tuesday morning. Prison staff tried to save him, but he was pronounced dead at 6.29 a.m. at a hospital in Wilkes-Barre. State police will investigate Carlos Corridor's death at the State Correctional Institution at Dallas, and the Luzerne County Coroner's Office will determine the cause of death. A new three-and-a-half-mile trail is coming to Roaring Brook, the Lackawanna County Commissioners awarded $2 million in grants to create a fitness path connecting Dunmore and Elmhurst. The work will start in Elmhurst and work its way down to Dunmore to prevent interference with PennDOT's Twin Bridges project. Residents are excited to watch the Roaring Brook Trail become a reality, which should take about a year and a half to complete. An added benefit of the trail will stop ATVs from illegally entering the, the county-owned property. The project is, is expected to begin within the next few weeks. Crashes caused traffic along two interstates in our area on Tuesday morning. Parts of I-84 in Pike County and I-81 in Susquehanna County were shut down while crews responded. Interstate 84 East was closed between Greentown and Tafton, while Interstate 81 was shut down in both directions due to many tractor-trailer crashes. There are no known injuries or what led to the wreck in Susquehanna County. Academy Award-winning actor Martin Sheen is expected to visit King's College and meet with students April 8th, 9th, and 10th. Sheen will appear in a limited engagement stage reading of Dustin Lance Black's play, Eight, at the George P. Maffei Theater. Officials stated that Sheen will participate in a closed-door session rehearsal with the theater department. Students on April 8th and 9th, Sheen was awarded an honorary degree from King's College 40 years ago and is looking forward to his return. Coming up, we'll tell you about a con controversial immigration law. in an ad I was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high just don't drive because if you feel different you drive different it's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. Uh, you're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, the Supreme Court on Tuesday cleared the way for Texas to immediately begin enforcing a controversial immigration law that allows state officials to arrest and detain people they suspect of entering the country legally. Legal challenges to the law are ongoing at the Federal Appeals Court, but the decision hands a significant but temporary win to Texas, which has been in an ongoing battle with the Biden administration over immigration policy. President Biden announced public service loan forgiveness for another group of borrowers on Thursday. The White House has approved the cancellation of nearly $6 billion in student loans for about 78,000 public service workers, including teachers, firefighters, and nurses. This announcement follows the Biden administration's cancellation of $5 billion in student loans for about 74 public sector borrowers back in January. So far, $144 billion has been approved in federal loan forgiveness for, for, uh, for, for about 4 million borrowers in total. Hunter Elward, former Mississippi Sheriff's deputy who faced the most serious of federal charges against him and five other officers in the torture of two black men last year, was sentenced to 20 years in prison in a highly emotional hearing on Tuesday. Elward pleaded guilty to federal charges, which includes discharge of a firearm during a crime of violence, conspiracy against rights, deprivation of rights under color of law, conspiracy to obstruct justice, and obstruction of justice related to the January 2023 incident. The former officer was also ordered to pay $79,500 in restitution to the victims. A Texas man was arrested in Utah after boarding a Delta Airlines flight using a photo of another passenger's ticket. 26-year-old Wyclef Eve Florizard faces a charge of stowaway on an aircraft. He intended to fly from Salt Lake City to Austin. Up next on TVM, Emily will update us on the upcoming weather. 
actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Welcome back to TVM News. Let's see what's in the forecast for the upcoming week. Over to you, Emily. Thank you. Now for this week's seven-day forecast. Today, it is partly cloudy. The high is 44 and the low is 38 with some rain this evening. Saturday through Thursday, it will be mid-40s to high 50s. On Saturday, the rain is going to transition into a winter mix. It is going to dry up for Sunday with it being mostly sunny, but the clouds start to roll in on Monday with it transitioning to rain on Wednesday. The rain will continue until Friday. That is all for the weather. We'll be back after these messages. We'll check in with Vichy and Goldschmidt to find out the latest in Marywood and professional sports. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive. The madness has begun, but before we dive into the NCAA tournament, we'll check out with what's been going on with Marywood Sports. The Pacers baseball team returned from Florida on a six game win streak, looking to extend it in their home opener against Penn State Brandywine. After falling behind 2 to nothing in the first, sophomore shortstop Adam Ginsberg launched a two-run home run to tie the game in the third inning. Both teams took turns holding the lead before a three-run seventh inning gave the Pacers a lead that they wouldn't relinquish, staying hot with an 8-5 to five victory. The Pacers returned to action in a doubleheader today in an Atlantic East Conference showdown against Immaculata University. Over to the turf where both of the Marywood's lacrosse teams lost this week. Despite a stellar five-goal performance from Avery Meehan, the women's team were, were unable to overcome Wilson College Phoenix, losing 10-8. to As for the men's squad, after holding the lead for most of the first period, they were completely outmatched, allowing 10 unanswered goals in the last two and a half periods, falling 13-3 to at the hands of the SUNY Morrisville Mustangs. The spring portion of the Marywood men's and women's tennis team seasons kicked off on Sunday, but not the way either squad would have liked being completely dismantled by the Sales University. The men's team was clean swept, losing all nine matches, while Kylie Kilgore was the lone victor for the women's team. Both teams are on the road on Sunday, heading to the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center in Queens, New York to face Pratt. Over to the national scene, it's the best time of year for college basketball fans as the NCAA National Basketball Tournament began yesterday. There was no shortage of excitement and upsets as teams like Oregon, Duquesne, and Oakland were busting brackets all across the nation. The madness continues today with top teams like reigning national champion UConn, the heavily favorited Purdue Boilermakers, and the SEC champion Auburn Tigers all beginning their quest for glory. The long wait for the MLB season is over as the Dodgers and Padres kicked off the 2024 MLB season with the Soul Series in South Korea starting on Wednesday. The Dodgers took game one thanks to Padres first baseman Jake Cronenworth's glove exploding, leading to a four-run eighth inning. Game two was a slugfest, with San Diego opening the game with a five-run first inning, eventually picking up the victory and splitting the series with a 15-11 victory. That's all for sports. TVM News will return after these messages. And to regular you.
If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Bus driver Kia Rousseff rescued a flock of children when her bus caught fire. And it wasn't until she took nine steps off the bus before it exploded in flames. At approximately 7 a.m. on March 13th, she found the bus losing power and beginning to smoke. Pulling over, one of the children alerted the driver that a fire had started under the bus. Ignoring the, ignoring the emergency exit, she led every child aged from kindergarten through eighth grade through the front door and onto the street. Wow, that's pretty impressive if you ask me. Yeah, if you ask around, I would definitely say that the driver and the student are definitely are heroes. It takes a lot of courage to step up and know that there was a fire under the bus. I agree. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of TVM News. From everyone at TV Marywood, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow TV Marywood's YouTube page and like the TVM Instagram page to stay up to date on the latest happenings and to watch additional content. I'm Nate McLean. And I'm Casey Jeanette. Have a great weekend, Marywood.